Hi guys. In this video, we'll take a look at exponential modeling, the general exponential model in context, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So how can we do exponential modeling? We have seen that given some data with small errors and a model for the relationship, we can determine the parameters involved. Let's say we have a particular relationship and we reduce it to a straight line in the log base 10 of x against log base 10 of y axes. And here we have a straight line. And let's say there are two parameters involved. We can find one of them using the vertical intercept and another using the gradient. If instead we know that our data is entirely correct, we do not want to have to go through this long process. The process goes forming a log equation, converting our data from normal to logarithm form, sketching our new data to form the straight line, finding the key information like the intercept and the gradient, and then finally to solve for the parameters. This in general is a long process and we'd like to avoid it if possible. We want to develop a method of determining the parameters more directly in this case. So how can we interpret general exponential models in context? We can use algebra to find the parameters in an exponential model. Suppose we want to model the variable y in terms of a variable x. And let's say we have that y is equal to the number 3 multiplied by b to the power of x, where b is unknown, and we're given the data x equals 4 when y equals 48. Then we can use this information to find the value of b. Namely, we can substitute in our y as 48 is equal to 3 multiplied by b to the power of 4, which is x. Then by dividing, we get that b to the power of 4 is equal to 16 from the 48 over 3. Then if we assume that b is positive, because if b is negative, the graph is highly discontinuous, then we get that b is equal to 2. So our model is therefore going to be y equals 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of x. We can be given different types of data to determine the parameters. We can be given initial data. This is from a time context, when t equals 0, the time. From the information we're given, we may be told, for example, that initially the velocity is 27 meters per second. We may also be given long-term data. This is again in a time context corresponding to t tending to infinity. In the information, we may be told, for example, that in the long term, the velocity tends to 3 meters per second. Now, any exponential expression can be written in terms of e to the x. Let's say we have that y equals a times b to the power of x plus a constant c. This is a general exponential model. Then we can write this as y equals a multiplied by e to the power of the natural logarithm of b, and again, still in the power, multiplied by x. And then we have our plus c. All we have done is to write b as e to the power of ln of b. We need to be able to evaluate exponential models in context. Let's say we examine the volume V of water in a tank at time t. And let's say we plot the volume V against the time t in two different cases. Case 1 corresponds to the model, and case 2 corresponds to the actual data that we have found. Now notice that there is a disparity between the model and the data. In particular, the model is unrepresentative of the data due to the lack of turning points as in the data. Our data has turning points here and here, but our model does not have these turning points. 
Therefore, the model is unrepresentative of the data. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to write 3 times 2 to the power of 5x in the form a e to the bx and give the values of a and b. The first step is to determine a strategy for transforming the expression. We want to write 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 5x in the form a multiplied by e to the power of bx. And therefore our strategy will be to write the number 2 in terms of e. Our second step is to use inverses to write 2 in terms of e. We have that 2 is equal to e to the power of the natural logarithm of 2 because these functions cancel out because they're inverses. Our third step is to substitute the result into the expression. So we have our 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 5x and we can substitute in our value for 2, namely we have 3 multiplied by e to the power of the natural logarithm of 2 and this is all to the power of 5x. Our fourth step is to use an index rule to simplify. In general, we have that e to the power of a, all to the power of a number b, is equal to e to the power of a times b, from the index rules. So therefore, our expression 3 multiplied by e to the power of ln2, all to the power of 5x, is going to be the same as 3 on the outside multiplied by e to the power of of 5 times ln2 and then multiplied by x, again all in the power. Our fifth step is to compare the coefficients, to find a and b and write 3 times 2 to the power of 5x in terms in the form a e to the bx. If we have our 3 e to the power of 5 ln2 multiplied by x, and this is in the form a times e to the power of bx, then we can compare coefficients and get that a must be equal to 3 and that b must be equal to 5 times the natural logarithm of 2. And therefore, our expression 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 5x is the same as 3 multiplied by e to the power of 5 ln2 multiplied by x. Our second example tells us that a temperature of an oven is measured against time, modelled exponentially. Initially, the temperature is 200 degrees Celsius, and after 3 minutes, it cools down to 100 degrees Celsius, and in the long term, it is 30 degrees Celsius. We are asked to find the parameters involved and to evaluate the suitability of the model. Our first step is to write down the general exponential relationship. The general exponential relationship is going to be the temperature, capital T, is equal to some number A multiplied by some number b to the power of little t, and then we have plus c. Our capital T is a temperature in degrees c, and our little t is a time in minutes, based on our information. Our second step is to interpret the long-term value. We're told the temperature goes to 30 degrees Celsius in the long term. Therefore, as the time goes to infinity, capital T is going to go to 30. This is our interpretation of the piece of information. Our third step is to determine C using the long-term value. If we look at our information, we can interpret that the oven is cooling down. And since the oven is cooling down, this corresponds to the value of B being strictly less than 1. If it was greater than 1, we would have exponential growth and it would be heating in temperature, rather than cooling down. And therefore, as the time goes to infinity, the value of a multiplied by b to the power of t must go to 0, because b is less than 1. Since we have that the temperature goes to 30 degrees, we can interpret that the value of c is precisely 30. This is because our temperature is given in general by a b to the power of t plus c. But we found that a b to the power of t goes to 0, but the temperature goes to 30. And so c must be 30, otherwise we won't get this behaviour. 
Our fourth step is to interpret the initial state. We're told that the oven is at 200 degrees initially. Therefore, when T is equal to zero, we have the temperature capital T is equal to 200. Our fifth step is to determine A using the initial state. We have that when T is equal to zero, capital T is equal to 200. Therefore, since our capital T is given by AB to the power of T plus 30, from the value of C as we found before, we have our expression AB to the power of zero corresponding to T equals zero, and we have the plus 30. This must be equal to 200 for the temperature. B to the zero is one, and so we just get the A. And so by rearranging, because we have A plus 30 equals 200, we get A is equal to 170. Our sixth step is to interpret the three minute condition. We're told that after three minutes, the oven is 100 degrees Celsius. Therefore, we have that when T is equal to three, capital T is equal to 100. Our seventh step is to determine B using the three minute condition. We have that when T is equal to three, capital T is equal to 100. And therefore, since our capital T is given by our A value 170 multiplied by B to the power of T plus our C value 30, we have that 170 multiplied by B to the power of three for our T equals three plus our 30 is equal to capital T, which is 100. We rearrange and get that B is equal to 0 0.744 to three significant figures. Our eighth step is to write down the values of the constants and the resulting equation for the model. We have our A as 170, our B as 0 0.744, and our C as 30. And therefore, since in general, our capital T was given by A multiplied by B to the power of T plus C, we have that our model for capital T is 170 multiplied by 0 0.744 to the power of T plus 30. Our last step is to discuss the suitability of the model. If we look again at our model and the long-term value from the data, we have that the temperature capital T will always be greater than 30 degrees because our capital T is given by 170 multiplied by 0 0.744 to the power of T plus 30. And the 170 multiplied by 0 0.744 to the power of T will always be strictly positive because it's a positive exponential. And this is true for all values of T. But this is itself unrealistic because of natural variation in the temperature due to surroundings. So in reality, it's possible for T to be less than 30 for later values of little t. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap and smiley face and together, let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.